another video segment with Laurel Hart. Um, today I wanted to thank everybody for your views and your support. Um, we reached a milestone on New Year's Day this year of 100,000 views, which totally surprised me. But I think what it says is that I need to post a little more, so I'm going to try to make that a New Year's resolution to post more material and um, get some more subject matter out there for you. Um, I appreciate those of you who have donated to help us do this, and so I want to um, thank those. And if you do want to donate to our um, video productions, then you can go to my webpage, which is laurelhart.com. I received a comment a while ago from someone saying um, they would like to see my process for drawing. And the question was, do you draw freehand? Do you um, use a grid method? Do you um, project your image? How do you get your image on transferred from your photo to your paper? And the answer to that question really is all of those methods I use. I didn't use to ever um, project or trace um, when I started out, but I've gotten to the point where if I'm doing a full-size sheet that is complicated with um, many figures in it or a really complicated architectural building, then um, I will sometimes project it just so I can get my proportions right and my placement right. And um, so, yes, I do that sometimes. And I also wanted to show you kind of a method that I use for gridding that might be helpful for some of you. Um, I'm going to show you a photo that um, I want to work from today. It's of these horses. And um, as you can see, I've got my source photo already gridded. And the um, ratio here is um, each square is going to be equal to two inches so that when I blow this up on my paper, I'm going to get a, an eight by 10 image to work from. So I have here a light box. I found a, an acetate um, gridded sheet of plastic. And I, I believe I just got this at a fabric store. And it ended up to fit my light tracing box exactly. So I can just put this on my light box and kind of clip it in here, like so. And then I can take my, um, my paper, my watercolor paper, and I'm able to see through this on my light box. So I can just see that my grid is under here and it's going to help me draw this to the proportions to an eight by 10. So I would like to show you um, an app that I purchased for um, doing this gridding, and it's called Grid Painter. I kind of <laughs> kind of hesitate to show you another app because the last one I showed, um, it quit being updated and a lot of you commented and said, um, we can't get that app anymore. But anyway, I hope this one is still going to be available for a while. It's called Grid Painter. And this is it right here. The, I think there's a little charge for it, but it was very minimal. Um, we'll post down below what it, what it is actually. But so I brought in um, the photograph of these horses. And the first thing I'm going to do is crop the photo. The original photo you can see had some excess um, stuff on the side. And I, I just wanted to keep that dark within the rectangle that's behind the horses. So that's about where I'm gonna crop it. And then, um, then I just touch on the left of this um, photo. Whoops, first I have to press crop. And then it gives me these tools on this side to work from. And I'm gonna tell it what size I want the canvas. So. I want it to be 10 inches wide. So there's a, just a little dial here. You can see where I'm going to dial it up to 10 inches on the width. And then my height, I want eight inches. So 
I'm ending up with this photograph of my horses gridded so that each square to um, end up to be eight by 10 is gonna be a two inch square. And that is the photo that I, um, I printed off for my reference photo. But now you can see that I've got this grid on my light box. It's a little light to see, but um, when I put my paper on there, then I can see underneath my grid. I've outlined this one a little bit just lightly so that you can see it a little better. And then I can draw um, my horses on there just following um, the, the grid from here and transferring it to here. So that's how um, I've done my drawing today. And I'm going to be um, working from these horses and hope that this is a method that you could use to help you in your drawing. It's um, a way to be very accurate and um, it's an easy way to transfer from a photo to a larger format. Now that I have completed my drawing, I've taped it on my board and I did use that technique to do this drawing. I had my gridded photo and I overlaid this on my um, light box and drew it, blew it up according to the grid. So it's an easy way to enlarge your photo and get it, um, get it accurate. Um, one thing about painting animals as we're doing this little scene of a horse, two horses, um, as long as you get the silhouettes pretty accurate, um, you're gonna be okay. People identify things by their silhouette generally. So if you have that fairly uh, real and accurate, then people are gonna um, accept your drawing as a, as a real looking horse or animal. I wanna just point out what um, palette I'm using, the colors on my palette today. Um, I've got Ariolan um, yellow, and this is cadmium yellow um, medium. Yellow ochre, this is a brown ochre. I usually have raw sienna here, but I accidentally put this one in and we'll see how this, see if I like this color. This is transparent oxide red, a color that I love. Um, it's available through Daniel Smith um, line of paints. And the reason I like this one is it's just a little more transparent and a little brighter than um, burnt sienna, which is this color here. I have um, burnt umber, uh, sap green, this is, I think, phthalo blue here. This is a new blue that I'm using called um, indanthrene blue. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct, but it's, I'm using it kind of in place of my ultramarine blue here and there. It seems to be just a little bit um, more to the cool side, so it mixes a little better with the reds um, than this warmer ultramarine. So I've got ultramarine blue, then this is my um, manganese blue. It's a manganese blue hue. I don't know that you can get the real manganese blue anymore, but I like it just as well. And this is olive green. This is my um, permanent alizarin crimson. This is magenta, um, cadmium red, medium. This is another, um, pink, I'm not sure which this really is, but it's very similar to magenta, cadmium orange, and then this is a white gouache that I have on my palette for um, corrections on if I, if I miss on my whites. The brushes that I'll be using today for this small of a painting are um, three of the low Cornell brushes in a size eight, a 10, and a 12. Um, I'll for sure be using the eight, probably the 10, and maybe the 12, but these two for sure. And then the other mop brush that I'm gonna use in this is a Winsor Newton Series 250. And it's a squirrel mop brush, holds a lot of water. So for putting in a beginning wash, I really like, I really like this brush. 
Um, I don't use a lot of square brushes, and I don't even know the real reason for that, but I just, I've just used the rounds for so long and feel comfortable with them, so these are the brushes that I like. So today I'm going to give myself a little um, task in doing this painting, and it's a good idea when you um, begin a painting to give yourself um, a goal to accomplish or um, one thing that you want to make sure turns out in the painting. And in this particular one, I want to push my colors. Um, I've, I want to exaggerate this um, uh, reflected light that you see on the horse's belly and on this horse's neck over here. I want to push that color just a little bit um, more to a uh, little brighter hue. And that's going to come in when I start the initial wash. And what I'm going to do is cover this whole paper with an initial wash. On, I'm going to start wet on to dry. And then I will um, cover everything that's not, that's not in direct sunlight. I'll leave these little patches of light on the horses here. But I will go over the, um, the foreground here with a wash, even though this is in sunlight. I'm not going to leave that great big white there. So I'm going to begin with, um, I think I will go ahead and start with my, um, my mop. And I'm going to mix up a good puddle of um, manganese blue. And generally when I'm painting in my studio, my uh, palette is just a little bit closer to me. Um, I'm having to readjust just a little bit to my normal setup here. And then I'm going to put my, um, I'm gonna put my uh, yellow ochre over on this other side. Because once that gets in, to touching that blue, it's going to go really green, and I, I don't want to go so green yet. So what I'm going to start with is just a very loose wash with this triad of color, like um, you've seen me do before. And the object of this is going to be to just keep it very loose and to cover my page quickly, get everything covered so I don't have that white, white space staring me in the face. And notice I'm going to go right over the, I'm going to leave the whites. Where the horse is um, in sunlight. And I want to stay, um, I kind of want to um, stay as much to a three or four value as I can here, um, because that's where the liveliest color lives, is in that value range. And um, I'm not going to be too concerned at all with what the local color is on these horses yet. Although I am going to be a little bit mindful of um, the fact that this horse in the end is going to be kind of a tan guy. I'm just going to continue this um, wash coming, coming down over here through everything that's not in sunlight. And picking up some of these beads so I don't get too much of a backwash in there. If I 
miss some of my whites, I'm going to just pull those out with the with the paper towel. Okay, so I've got I've got the edge of that horse leg that I want to make sure and leave there. And down in here, I do know that I'm going to want this um, more of a yellow, yellowy color. So I'm going to leave that. And I've got, I missed one of my whites up here. I'll pick that out. I'm trying, as you can see, to not leave, um, to not really leave uh, areas that are going to dry into a hard edge on me. I'm trying to work, work through this. And there's just one little light on the leg of that horse that I want to leave, as well as over here. And where I was saying that I want to um, Kind of accentuate the the um, those um, reflected lights. I'm going to put these in in some of these places in the um, the underbelly of the horse and the. Okay, I want that white over there. And this one, too, over here is going to have kind of a pretty reflected light under there. And on, on the horse's snout there, too. Snout? Do horses have snouts? I don't know. I want to catch all that before before I um, lose my soft edges there. Okay, and then we're almost we've almost got this on here all the way. I'm having a little hard time with my manganese blue coming. in here. So I'm I'm kind of just treating the horses as if they're invisible right at this point. They're not, they're just coming in and out of the, in and out of the foreground, or the background. And all I wanted to do was really preserve those pretty, those pretty highlights on the horses, and I did. So I think that's going to be pretty. And now at this point, I've got my wash on. I just want to um, let that dry and then I'll start coming back in with some um, deeper color and stronger values over that which I've shown in some of my other videos. So I'm going to get my um, my hair dryer and blow that dry.
Okay, I've got that dry, and I neglected to mention that my paper is a Winsor Newton 140-pound uh, cold press. Um, so it's got a little bit of tooth to it, not a whole lot, but um, I mentioned in, I think, my first video that that paper is not available anymore in the large sheets, but it is back now, so I'm really happy about that. I love this paper, and one of the reasons I like it is that it will dry right back to flat without um, buckling, even when the um, paper is not stretched. I just have it taped down with masking tape. So I, um, I'll let you know now that that's the paper I'm using. Okay, coming back into the painting again now for the second phase, I'm going to clean my palette quickly. And now I'm going to um, move to um, some stronger pigments that have the ability to get me to a value 9 or 10 or whatever I need. Um, and this will be the kind of what I call the second wash, although it's not really a wash. It's, it's broken up into different um, pieces of the painting, but it will, it will be going into now the values from about mm, the middle of the value scale to, a, to the darkest darks of the painting. Um, so I'm going to start with my tin here, and I'm going to, actually I'm going to start with my eight, and I'm going to start now with um, the indanthrene blue, which you'll see is similar to um, an ultramarine, but it just, I don't know, I think it's just a little cooler and mixes really nicely with the... Um, Alizarin Crimson. And then for my my yellow this time, I'm going to use my, um, that was the wrong color, I'm going to use my uh, Transparent Oxide Red. And still, yeah, I still am going to want some um, some of the ultra or, uh, yellow ochre as well. So, um, Starting now on this this horse to the left, I'm going to um, come in with just mixtures of that um, of that those that triad, and um, kind of going back and forth between the warms and the cools. This part of his rump there is is pretty cool. And then I want to slightly red, slightly red in there. But as I mentioned, I want to push, I want to really push the color on these horses. There's, there's a lot more color in there than what I think sometimes we see. And it's just so much more interesting to the, um, to the viewer or the, um, the eye to highlight, to really punch these different colors. Okay, so under under his belly there, I'm, I really want to kind of keep that really warm and show that reflected light that's coming up from that warm uh, foreground. And I don't want to um, totally leave him as if he's painted and cut out and stuck on the um, background. So I'm going to start with putting in a little bit of this background and letting my, letting my, um, that's too strong, letting my uh, horse kind of bleed into that. in places where that's where that shadow is going to, going to end right there. But see how I'm playing up that, um, that really warm color on the horse's underside there. Let's try this. I don't know that I've ever tried this um, 
brown ochre. Let's see what we get with this. So anyway, I'm going to come across here and then... Um, Keep going here with the horse's body. Um, kind of a dark shadow in between there and the tail. It's kind of, I just kind of want to mix that um, between warm and cool as we go down. Kind of some cooler where this uh, where the leg bends and curves. Some will be warmer in the light, and then he looks like he's got white socks. I don't know what you call those on a horse, but um, so I don't want to. Cover those all up. I want that little. There's going to be a hard edge on that left side of the tail, but then I want a soft, a soft edge in here on the shadow side of the horse's tail. I'm carefully. Um, leaving those whites there where the where the tail kind of is in the sunlight. And then I'll come in later on with some more dark and, and um, clean that up on the edge of the tail. That needs, I think, just a little cooler. Color in there. Okay. And this leg is just kind of a neutral grayish tone. And the other really nice feature about um, about Windsor Newton paper is it just has really good lifting qualities. I really like that about it. But you can kind of see how very little is needed to tell the story of that horse as long as as long as I've got the outline shape correct, um, I can I can get away with other mistakes within the horse um, and still have it read pretty true. Pull out my white here. I covered that inadvertently. I, you, you might wonder why I don't use masking fluid, which I could um, use there, probably to pretty good advantage, but um, it just doesn't always end up in the right spot when I get to it. So I kind of prefer to just leave them. I'm going to soften this edge a little bit. As things turn away on a rounded form like that, the edge will generally be soft there. So that's a little better. Okay. And then I told you I'm going to come back in here with um, with 
with some of the um, darker stuff to um, show that that tail is frayed or whatever you want to say. Fix that a little bit later, too, I think. Okay. And I, I'm really loving this color in here, so I don't really want to go back in there right at the moment. I can tell I'm going to need a little more shadow right in here, which I'll come back and do. But for now, that's kind of the gist of that horse. And then... Let's get this other guy on here. He's going to be um, more of a cooler, more of a cooler shadow on him through there. And yet it's got some warmth to it too. It's kind of, kind of a gray, gray blue. Again, as it's coming, I'm going to pull some of that out into the background. Again, as it's coming down into um, the underside of the horse, it's it's going to have some of that beautiful reflected uh, light in it. And especially on the under underside of his neck, I don't... I think the rule would be it's better to overplay it a little more than it and then tone it down than it is to leave it less, um, you know, too weak. So I'm going to just overplay the color in there a little bit. go through that there and then I'll come back in and put uh, a little more of the uh, those dark spots on the pony I'm going to do a a lesson on um, pretty soon on um, intu intuitive color, which is color that is not really there, but it's color that you feel about your subject. So um, these horses are kind of kind of that way there. I want to show what I, you know, what I feel about these horses. So I'll come in there in just a minute and get there, um, get the dark spots on him. But for now, kind of get these grays on his legs down here. Um, for me, I just think that is so much more interesting to see that imagined color than maybe what the exact local color really is. And 
and there's just a, I don't know, such a pretty softness to this paper that I just, I just love it. I'm going out of my drawing a little bit there to correct that leg a little bit. And I really don't, don't want to go to much deeper value um, than that. I think I will where I'm going to um, do a little bit of back painting to set off that, uh, his mane. And this horse over here's got a bit of a, a little bit dark in there too. And when we get the dark behind these horses, the the light on them is going to really pop them pop them out into the picture plane. See if I can start pulling some of the tail out too. So this is a subtraction, I suppose you'd call it, where I'm actually pulling paint off the paper. And that leaves a really beautiful mark, a really nice soft mark that would indicate that's um, hair or horses. I guess it's not fur, it's hair, whatever. Okay, so um, now I, while my horse on the right is a little bit tacky still. I want to go in with um, this real dark, uh, I went in a little too soon, but this really dark spot on him. I want to be careful to leave some of that really, that really pretty white underneath in there. And then his He's also got this I'm going to continue putting in these spots on this guy and they're going to be a mixture of the raw umber and I'm having a hard time getting any power out of that raw umber and that um, um, and danthrene blue. So I'm gonna try to leave some of the mane there that's kind of coming down over that spot. And then down in here. I might want that one a little bit on the warmer side since it's kind of in the sun there. down under his body there. And those spots kind of show the contours of his torso. He's got a spot back here that's kind of at the top of his leg and sets off that roundness of his um, body really nicely. Okay. And then um, I don't know, too linear there. Needs to flow a little bit more. 
And then just going to put a little bit of cool right there. But really wanting to leave that beautiful reflected light again. Okay, and then we've got just, I think I'll just wet this right along the edge of the of, of the top of his, that light on him. And just put a little bit of uh, that dark, that dark that's kind of showing the, sh the shadow side of his mane on there. Leave a hard edge there either. Okay, then um, got a little bit of a shadow there where his a uh, little bit of his hair is lifted up. Okay, that needs to be darker. This guy's ear up in here. <clears throat> And I'm just kind of softening some edges there. <clears throat> now, um, I don't think I'm going to re-wet that. Sometimes I'll re-wet that to go back in with the background. But actually, in this case, I am just going to go right over the... Right over the dry with these wet washes. I want that shadow of that and that lake to be just a little bit and I'm leaving just that little bit of light on the edge of his um, neck. Sometimes it is actually really pretty to just let those colors go on individually and not even mix them on the palette. Just let them bleed on e onto each other on the paper. And as those um, bleed into each other, they, as long as they've got the same value with each other, um, they'll, they'll pretty much read as one color. But again, I, I just don't want one big solid black in there. It's just uh, so much more interesting when you use a, a really beautiful color. And this little bit of a dark right in here is really important there to set off that. Set off between those two horses. Okay, then um,
opening down here again. Want to kind of indicate that there's maybe, I don't know, some boards or something back in there. In this barn area, I can kind of see a little bit of stuff in there. And I'm still going to let that, I am still going to keep a hard edge over here because that's setting that horse off against that light. And just see how that just pops out into the, into the foreground when you hit a dark behind a light like that. Just, oh, just absolutely one of my favorite, favorite ways to paint, painting behind like that. And then I've kind of lost, I want to make sure we get that little divot of, on the horse's back there. Still, um, I'm still being careful not to totally over mix these colors on the um, on the palette, but rather doing it on the paper. I keep, and I keep forgetting that my I keep forgetting, and I keep going back into my ultramarine blue, trying to use this other blue today habits are hard to break. Okay, now because this is the shadow side of the horse over here, I am going to lose that edge by just kind of um, coming back in with a damp brush and pulling that over onto the, sh the horses behind there. And do you see how that softened that edge? That's a good little trick for softening edges. Yeah, don't you like that indanthrine blue? I, I don't know how to say it right, I'm probably, but I just think that's really a nice, nice, nice color of blue. And I need to kind of warm that up, drop in some, yeah, drop in some warm in there. So if you can keep those washes um, almost separated like that into the different, the different tones of the triad, um, they will um, stay clean. 
you mix them too much on your uh, palette, they're going to go muddy on you. And we don't like mud. Okay, and um, some of this I may I may want to lose some of the edges on that back leg too, just so that's not quite so prominent. And pick it out as well. You just don't want everything reading as a hard edge. And oftentimes that is a, one of the really hardest things to learn in um, watercolor. Okay, now I am seeing that I want to um, emphasize this, this part of the horse right here. Um, and also my... Um, my horse here looks a little funny. His leg there, that's a little better. A little white there. This is kind of looking like a cow's back, but I don't, I want to make that more rounded right in there. Okay, and then um, I want to, like I said, I want to come back in here now, wet that down just a little bit, and it needs to be just a little more powerful in terms of value there. Uh, and again, it's kind of a cool and warm mix. But I want it to come up over the um, edge of the, the leg here. We're going to leave some little tail bits coming over here. And as this comes down here and then kind of ends where his little sock goes or whatever, those are called on a horse, I don't know. And then it's got kind of a nice little warm patch right, right in here. That I want to be careful not to cover up all that really pretty, um, colorful reflection on his, on his underbelly there. And it looks like I need a little bit of a cooler, cooler color right there on his, um, on his neck. Yeah, that, that took it down a value that I think works a little better. But these washes on this paper can stay so transparent. It's just really fun to play with them. Uh, you can go and go and go. But okay, we're going to finish up here with um, putting in the, um, the shadows coming off of the horse here. And I'm going to do these on dry paper. I hope I won't um, be mad at myself for doing this, but it feels like that's what they need to be. And this is where you can show the contour of the, of 
the earth because the so over in here and again I'm just gonna do these same colors I'm I'm just gonna go from um, I just want to keep the shadows really colorful and take that right back into there. Start out on the edge of his little hoof here and see how those um, shadows just kind of wave as they go over the contour of the ground. Okay, so I just don't want to get into any hard edges on this shadow, so I'm just going to put these in kind of quickly. And I think, I hope you can see the value of um, painting in a limited palette. I've used, what, maybe six colors six colors on here but do you see how related everything is to each other and it just um, it just really um, unifies the whole painting and makes it so much uh, more interesting and over in here this dark shape I want to tie right back up into there being careful to jump over those little tiny spots of interest there that are in the dirt I don't want to I don't want to do those too too overpoweringly there so I'm going to pull them up into the legs of the horses I don't want to um I think a lot of times we tend to over um uh, darken our shadows and and um and then it I don't know, they just don't look natural when we do that. Okay, just a little bit of um, softening of edges over here. I'll 
looks a little hard, rough or harsh there. Then um, I still want to just pull out or yeah, set off, I guess is the right word, um, this tail. I'm going to do that with a little bit of dark there and just a little bit of darker stuff in here. But blend that out. And I'm still feeling like we need a little more. This has a lot more shadow to it coming through there, but I don't want to do that too much. And then I'm just kind of smoothing out this body. I've got a little bit of um, I don't know what you call those things, the washy things, um, blossoms. I'm trying to smooth those out a little bit. Maybe just here and there a little bit of a darker shadow to show those, show the mane a little bit there. And I think I could um, knock this back right here a little bit too. Making that some more of a bluish tone. Kind of a mottled Okay, then let's do a little bit of shadow right here on the horse's snout. Again, I'm going to leave that little bit of reflected light underneath. And that's in shadow right there on the edge. And this little leg here needs a little more definition, I think, back in here. Letting us differentiate those two legs. I am going to go back in on the this pony's, um, what do you call it here, spot. And right up in here too, I think needs to be strengthened a little bit.
maybe I don't know I might just I didn't want too hard of an edge there but Okay, I didn't want to overwork this, and I don't think I did. Um, I probably, at this point, I could do a little more down in here, but do you know what? I'm not even going to. I'm going to leave it as it is and just sign it. Um, And that's it. Um, I'll actually, I might just um, take a little bit out on these um, lit at uh, sides, just kind of bring those out a little more. Especially down in here. Sweep that out a little bit over there. A little bit of the hair out here, too. And then as soon as this is dry, I will um, come back and erase my pencil marks, too. I'm just pulling out these highlights just a little more prominently. So they show a little more prominently, I should say, I guess. And then you really get the feeling of those horses in that um, backlight. Nothing like backlight in watercolor for me. Putting a little differentiation between the cast shadow and the shadow on the horse. Oh, and I think I better give him a nostril too. I don't want to be too dark with it, but yeah, he does need that. I 
I lose that back leg again. I could go into the background and define a little more as to what's back in that dark, but I'm not going to. I like it how it is. So I'm done. Um, the goal that I gave myself was to exaggerate the color. And I think I did do that. Um, it, I left it a little bit abstract, and that's what I think is um, one of the beautiful traits of watercolor is being able to um, leave things loose and um, exciting. I like this little piece, and it tells what I wanted it to say, which is the main the main goal that we have is to um, express what it was that we saw that took our breath away. And um, I just, I love these two little horses. I love their gesture. Um, and I like the, the color that I added in. So thank you for being with me today. Um, it's been a fun painting. And I hope you'll join me again in the next uh, video that we produce. Thank you for your views and thank you for your support. I'd like to ask you in the comments if you would like to um, mention some things that you would like me to cover, um, maybe problems that you are experiencing in your artistic pursuits that I could help with or things that you'd like me to paint. Just let me know. And thanks again for joining me. all gooped up. <laughs> Hello.